The committee has received no comments or opposition in, no comments or testimony in opposition to the nominee. Without objection, I move both the print and report with leave for staff and technical conforming and editorial changes. Is there discussion? Mr. Cash, would you call the roll? The vote will be on both the print and report with leave for staff. Councilmember Che. Yes. Councilmember Che votes yes. Councilmember Gray. Yes. Councilmember Gray votes yes. Councilmember Henderson. Yes. Councilmember Henderson votes yes. Councilmember Lewis George. Yes. Councilmember Lewis George votes yes. Councilmember McDuffie. Yes. Councilmember McDuffie votes yes. Chairman Mendelson. Yes. Chairman Mendelson votes yes. Councilmember Nadeau. Yes. Councilmember Nadeau votes yes. Councilmember Pinto. Yes. Councilmember Pinto votes yes. Councilmember Silverman. Yes. Councilmember Silverman votes yes. Councilmember Robert White. Yes. Councilmember Robert White votes yes. Councilmember Trayon White. Yes. Councilmember Trayon White votes yes. Councilmember Allen. Yes. Councilmember Allen votes yes. Councilmember Bonds. Yes. Councilmember Bonds votes yes. Mr. Chairman, there are 13 yeses. Thank you, Mr. Cash. The um, print and report are approved. Madam General Counsel, is the measure legally and technically sufficient for our consideration? Yes, it is. Madam Secretary, is the record complete? Once the report is filed. Madam Budget Director, does the measure's fiscal impact statement comply with council requirements? Yes, it does. Without objection, this measure will be placed on the consent agenda for today's additional legislative meeting. The next item for markup is PR 24-1038, Historic Preservation Review Board, Matthew Bell, Confirmation Resolution of 2022. The purpose of this resolution is to confirm the reappointment of Matthew Bell as an architect member of the Historic Preservation Review Board for a term to expire July 21st, 2025. Mr. Bell is a Ward 3 resident and is a practicing architect with over 30 years of experience. Mr. Bell's work as an architect includes master plans for Upper Georgia Avenue, the George Washington University's Foggy Bottom Campus Plan, Hill East, which is res at Reservation 13 and the McMillan Reservoir site. Building projects include modernizations of Stoddard Elementary School, Dunbar and Roosevelt High Schools, and the Cleveland Park Library. Current projects include master plans and building projects for American and Catholic University. Several of these projects have involved modernization or additions to landmark buildings, historic sites, or sites located in historic districts. Mr. Bell's work has won awards from the American Institute of Architects, the U.S. Green Building Council, and the Committee of 100 on the Federal City. Mr. Bell is nominated for reappointment as an architect member of the board. Mr. Mr. Bell, Mr. Bell meets the qualifications for serving on the board and has demonstrated and has demonstrated knowledge of and interest in historic preservation. Assuming this is approved, uh, the committee recommends council approval of PR 24-1038, the confirmation of Mr. Matthew Bell for reappointment as an architect member of the Historic Preservation Review Board. This legislation was introduced on October 28, 2022 with the request of the mayor. The committee of the whole held, the committee of the whole held a round table on the measure on November 21st, 2022. The committee has received no testimony or comments in opposition to the nomination. Uh, without objection, I move both the print and report with leave for staff to make technical, conforming, and editorial changes. Is there discussion? The vote will be on both the print and report with leave for staff. Mr. Cash, would you call the roll? Councilmember Gray. Yes. Councilmember Gray votes yes. Councilmember Henderson. Yes. Councilmember Henderson votes yes. Councilmember Lewis George. Yes. Councilmember Lewis George votes yes. Councilmember McDuffie. Yes. Councilmember McDuffie votes yes. Chairman Mendelson. Yes. Chairman Mendelson votes yes. Councilmember Nadeau. Yes. Councilmember Nadeau votes yes. Councilmember Pinto. Yes. Councilmember Pinto votes yes. Councilmember Silverman. Yes. Councilmember Silverman votes yes. Councilmember Robert White. Yes. Councilmember Robert White votes yes. Councilmember Trayon White. Yes. Councilmember Trayon White votes yes. Councilmember Allen. Yes. Councilmember Allen votes yes. Councilmember Bonds. Yes. Councilmember Bonds votes yes. Councilmember Che. Yes. Councilmember Che votes yes. Mr. Chairman, there are 13 yeses. Thank you, Mr. Cash. The uh, print and report are approved unanimously. Madam General Counsel, is the measure legally and technically sufficient for our consideration? Yes, it is. Madam Secretary, is the record complete? Once the report is filed. 
Madam Budget Director, does the measure's fiscal impact statement comply with council requirements? Yes, it does. Without objection, this measure will be placed on the consent agenda for today's additional legislative meeting. If there's no objection, we'll take the next two resolutions uh, together in block. Uh, they are both to the District of Columbia State Athletics Commission. The, the let me see, where do I wanna start? The District of Columbia State Athletics Commission is an independent agency that oversees the District of Columbia State Athletic Association. The association is an association of District of Columbia public, public charter and independent schools, private and parochial. The District of Columbia State Athletic Association participants share knowledge and best practices to enhance student athlete achievement through athletic programming and to provide quality life learning experiences. The purpose of PR 24-1050 is to confirm the mayor's nomination of Larry Carroll for reappointment to the District of Columbia State Athletics Commission to serve a four-year term ending November 16th, 2026. Mr. Carroll has over 25 years of health, wellness, and educational fitness experience. Throughout Mr. Carroll's career, he has designed numerous instructional fitness programs in cardio, kickboxing, wellness, nutritional counseling, and strength training to address the needs of his clients. Mr. Carroll currently works as the program manager of Larry's World of Fitness and Chaos Gym and Athletic Training Center. He also serves as a member of the District of Columbia State Athletic Commission <clears throat> since he's being nominated for reappointment. The um, the, the uh, let me go, go to the second one, and I'll give the chronology. Uh, the purpose of PR 24-1051 is to confirm the mayor's nomination of Sarah Navarro for appointment to the District of Columbia State Athletics Commission to serve a four-year term ending November 16, 2026. Ms. Navarro is the Senior Deputy Chief of Secondary Schools at DCPS. In this role, she leads the district's public school system to provide educational opportunities for all secondary students. She also oversees various educational programs, including school counseling, academic scheduling support, ninth grade ac academies, student engagement athletics, graduation, and career and college preparation. Prior to joining DCPS, Ms. Navarro was the principal of the Maya Angelou Adult Learning Center and founding board chair of the Sojourner Truth Montessori Public Charter School. Um, in case it seems strange that an employee of DCPS would be uh, uh, appointed, uh, the law requires that somebody from DCPS be appointed. The, both of these resolutions were introduced at the request of the mayor on November 10th, 2022. Because of the short timeline and our desire to get the commission complete, we just did, I believe, four other nominations about a month ago. Uh, the Committee of the Holes moved forward on these nominations without a hearing, um, although I'm mistaken here. We did have a hearing on December, a roundtable on December 8th, 2022. The Committee has received no testimony or comments in opposition to these nominations, to either of these nominations. Without objection, I move the prints and reports for both of these resolutions, PR 24-1050 and PR 24-1051, would leave for staff to make technical conforming and editorial changes. Is there a discussion? And I misspoke when I started to say that we didn't have a hearing. We did have a hearing or a round table on, on them. Uh, Mr. The, the vote will be on both the prints and reports. Would leave for staff. Mr. Cash, would you call the roll? Councilmember Henderson. Yes. Councilmember Henderson votes yes. Councilmember Lewis George. Yes. Councilmember Lewis George votes yes. Councilmember McDuffie. Yes. Councilmember McDuffie votes yes. Chairman Mendelson. Yes. Chairman Mendelson votes yes. Councilmember Nadeau. Yes. Councilmember Nadeau votes yes. Councilmember Pinto. Yes. Councilmember Pinto votes yes. Councilmember Silverman. Yes. Councilmember Silverman votes yes. Councilmember Robert White. Yes. Councilmember Robert White votes yes. Councilmember Trayon White. Right. Yes. Councilmember Trayon White votes yes. Councilmember Allen. Yes. Councilmember Allen votes yes. Councilmember Bonds. Yes. Councilmember Bonds votes yes. Councilmember Che. Yes. Councilmember Che votes yes. Councilmember Gray. Yes. Councilmember Gray votes yes. Mr. Chairman, there are 13 yeses. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Cash. The um, resolutions and reports are approved unanimously. Madam General Counsel, are these measures legally and technically sufficient for our consideration? Yes, they are. Madam Secretary, is the record complete for each? Once the report and hearing records are filed. Madam Budget Director, does the measures, do the measures, fiscal impact statements comply with council requirements? Yes, they do. There's no objection and these measures will be placed on the consent agenda for today's additional legislative meeting. The next item for markup is PR 24-1083, Board of Directors of the Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority, Spring Worth Appointment Resolution of 2022. The purpose of this resolution is to appoint Ms. Spring Worth as a alternate member of the WMATA Board of Directors to complete a term to end June 30th, 2024. Ms. Worth is a Ward 4 resident. Currently, she serves as the WMATA Budget and Policy Manager for DDOT. The WMATA Board is comprised of eight principal directors who are voting members and eight alternate directors. Ms. Worth is being proposed as an alternate director from the district. The signatories to the compact, the District of Columbia, Maryland, and Virginia, and the federal government are required to appoint two voting members and two non-voting members to the WMATA board. Uh, Ms. Worth's credentials are impressive and uh, she has a significant public transportation expertise. Assuming this is approved by the committee, the committee is recommending the appointment of Ms. Worth to serve on the WMATA board of directors as an alternate member. She meets the Requirements to serve on the board pursuant to the law. Um, this resolution was introduced by me on November 23rd, 2022. And uh, the committee did not have a hearing because we were anxious to get this before the full council quickly. I move the print and report with leave for staff to make technical conforming and editorial changes. I should say without objection, I move both the print and report. Is there discussion? Uh, the roll call vote will be on both the print and report with leave for staff. Mr. Cash. Councilmember Lewis George. Yes. Councilmember Lewis George votes yes. Councilmember McDuffie. Yes. Councilmember McDuffie votes yes. Chairman Mendelson. Yes. Chairman Mendelson votes yes. Councilmember Nadeau. Yes. Councilmember Nadeau votes yes. Councilmember Pinto. Yes. Councilmember Pinto votes yes. Councilmember Silverman. Yes. Councilmember Silverman votes yes. Councilmember Robert White. Yes. Councilmember Robert White votes yes. Councilmember Tran White. Yes. Councilmember Tran White votes yes. Councilmember Allen. Yes. Councilmember Allen votes yes. Councilmember Bonds. Yes. Councilmember Bonds votes yes. Councilmember Che. Yes. Councilmember Che votes yes. Councilmember Gray. Yes. Councilmember Gray votes yes. Councilmember Henderson. Yes. Councilmember Henderson votes yes. Mr. Chairman, there are 13 yeses. Thank you, Mr. Cash. The, uh, res the, the um, resolution and report, the print and report are approved unanimously. Madam General Counsel, uh, is the measure legally and technically sufficient for our consideration? Yes, it is. Madam Secretary, is the record complete? Once the report is filed. Madam Budget Director, does the measure's fiscal impact statement comply with council requirements? Yes, it does. Without objection, this measure will be placed on the consent agenda for today's additional legislative meeting. The final item for approval is Council Period 24 report of the Committee of the Whole. As members know, or at least committee chairs know, our rules require the committees have a report at the end of every council period. And uh, so that's what I'm presenting. It was circulated yesterday. In a moment, I'll move to um, I'll move for its approval. The, um, just to note some of the highlights, and there are a few highlights. During Council Period 24, uh, the Committee of the Whole marked up 62 bills and 68 resolutions. Five additional reports were adopted. In addition, provisions from four bills and three resolutions were included in other legislation marked up by the committee, which would sort of bring to a total of 66 bills and 71 resolutions that moved through the committee. Uh, eight resolutions were deemed approved without markup, and six resolutions were withdrawn before the committee could act on them. The committee held 58 hearings, 36 roundtables, two joint hearings, 12 performance oversight hearings, two budget briefings, and 12 budget oversight hearings. Uh, Non-legislatively, the committee was active with regard to oversight hearings on important 
issues key to improving public education, such as truancy, st student achievement. In addition, the committee held several hearings to press for improvements at what used to be known as Department of Consumer and Regulatory Affairs and has now been broken into the Department of Buildings and the Department of Licensing and Consumer Protection. Um, the, just to mention a few of the more important measures that the committee of the whole approved, in addition to fiscal year budgets for two fiscal years, uh, Bill 24-1, the Comprehensive Plan Amendment Act of 2021, uh, Bill 24-113, Medical Cannabis Amendment Act, which is for final reading today. Bill 24-301, Business and Enter Entrepreneurship Support to Thrive Amendment Act of 2022, which I refer to as the BEST Act, and uh, which uh, restructures our licensing uh, permitting. In fact, I'm looking down the dais. I see Councilmember Pinto, who had authored it, um, to... Um, make the licensing structure a little cheaper and also easier to navigate for businesses. Bill 24-357, protecting consumers from unjust debt collection practices, which got very little attention, but actually substantially rewrote our debt collection law and brought it into the 20, what century are we in, 22nd century? Well, I'd like to say it's the 22nd century, even if that's not correct. Uh, Bill 24-429, Metro for DC Amendment Act of 2022 originally authored by Councilmember Allen. It's uh, his final reading today and would provide fare-free bus service beginning next July. Bill 24-570, Schools First in Budgeting Amendment Act, which um, uh, restructures the way schools will get budgeted, not DCPS, but the individual schools and, and the annual um, budget crisis that schools seem to go through. Those are some of the highlights. There's a lot of statistical detail in the report. I move the report with leave for staff to make technical, conforming, and editorial changes. Discussion on the motion? I think we can do this by voice vote. Uh, the vote is on the report, Council Period 24 report of the Committee of the Whole uh, with leave for staff. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? I don't see or hear any no votes. Uh, the motion, the report is approved unanimously. And I don't believe I have to do the clearance because it's not going to the legislative meeting. We'll turn now to consideration of measures from other committees. There are two measures from the Committee on Business and Economic Development chaired by Councilmember Kenya McDuffie. The first is PR 24-1046. Director of the Office of Nightlife and Culture Salah Zapari, Confirmation Resolution of 2022. Mr. McDuffie. Thank you, Chairman. This proposed resolution was introduced on November 10th, 2022 by you. Chairman Mendel sent at the request of the mayor and referred to the Committee on Business and Economic Development on November 15th, 2022. The committee held a public hearing on this measure on December 7th of this year and a markup on December 13th. The measure will confirm the appointment of the mayor's nominee, Salah Saspare, to the position of director of the mayor's Office of Nightlife and Culture. Mr. Saspare was appointed as interim director of the Office of Nightlife and Culture on November 10, 2022, following the resignation of his predecessor. Mr. Saspare previously served as the director of strategic engagement. That's actually the director of the strategic engagement office at Metropolitan Police Department and as a special assistant to the chief of police. Award one resident, Mr. Saspari earned a Bachelor of Arts from California University of Pennsylvania and has completed postgraduate classes at Georgetown University Law Center, George Washington University, and the Naval Postgraduate School. With that, I move the measure and ask that it be placed on the agenda for the legislative meeting to follow. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McDuffie. Are there questions? Questions are in order. Uh, I have three. Madam General Counsel, is the measure legally and technically sufficient for our consideration? Yes, it is. Madam Secretary, is the record complete? Yes, it is. Madam Budget Director, does the measure's fiscal impact statement comply with council requirements? Yes, it does. The objection to this measure will be placed on the consent agenda for today's additional legislative meeting. The next measure is PR 24-1047, 
Public Service Commission, Ted Treby, Jr., Confirmation Resolution of 2022. Councilmember McDuffie. Thank you. Uh, this measure was introduced on November 10th, 2022 by Chairman Mendelson at the request of the mayor and referred to the Committee on Business and Economic Development on November 15th, 2022. And the committee held a public hearing on the measure on December 7th and a markup on December 13th, 2022. The proposed resolution would confirm the appointment of the mayor's nominee, Ted Trebu Jr. as a member of the Public Service Commission for a term to end on June 30th, 2026. Mr. Trebu has over 30 years of experience in public affairs, coordinating legislative activities and community outreach to meet the needs of his clients. Most recently, Mr. Trebu served as the managing director of the DC Sustainable Energy Utility, where he led the agency's execution of its economic, environmental, and job creation goals. Prior to his tenure at DCSEU, Mr. Trebu served as district as a at-large council member, uh, at-large member, and president of the DC State Board of Education. He's also previously served as executive director of the Green Builders Council of DC and regional vice president for PEPCO. Mr. Trebu earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in economics from Dartmouth College and a Juris Doctor from Howard University Law School. He is a War Four resident. With that, I'd ask that this be um, moved to the uh, agenda for the legislative meeting to follow. Thank you, Mr. McDuffie. Are there questions from members? Uh, Madam General Counsel, is the measure legally and technically sufficient for our consideration? Yes, it is. Madam Secretary, is the record complete? Yes, it is. Madam Budget Director, does the measure's fiscal impact statement comply with council requirements? Yes, it does. Without objection, this measure will be placed on the consent agenda for today's additional legislative meeting. The next two measures are from the Committee on Judiciary and Public Safety, chaired by Councilmember Charles Allen. Both are before us only if we approve a waiver of Council Committee of the whole Rule 403B. This is a notice requirement since they Reports were not filed, I believe it's last Wednesday, but were filed, were filed on Thursday, which qualifies for this rule waiver. If there's no objection, I'll ask Councilmember Allen if he wants to move the waiver uh, for the two, that is Waverman Block. So move, Mr. Chair. Is there discussion? The vote is on the waiver. Uh, all those in favor of waiving co committee the whole rule 403B say aye. 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 Are, there any aye. No, are there any no votes? Uh, the motion's approved. If there's no objection, we'll consider both measures, since they both are appointments to the Board of Elections. PR 24-996, District of Columbia Board of Elections, James Caleb Boggs III, Confirmation Resolution 2022, and PR 24-1056, District of Columbia Board of Elections, Karen Greenfield, Confirmation Resolution 2022. Councilmember Allen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. PR 24-996, the District of Columbia Board of Elections, James Caleb Boggs III, Confirmation Resolution 2022, was introduced on October 21st, 2022 by you at the request of the mayor. Resolution would confirm the appointment of James Caleb Boggs as a member of the Board of Elections to serve the remainder of an unexpired term that would end in July 7th, 2023. Mr. Boggs is currently a partner at King & Spaulding, where he's the co-lead of the firm's FinTech blockchain cryptocurrency and state's attorney general practices. He represents a broad range of companies, trade associations, and nonprofits before policymakers at all levels of government. He assists clients with issues relating to fintech and cryptocurrency regulation, data privacy and security, national security, and technological innovation. Prior to his time in private practice, Mr. Boggs worked as counsel to the U.S. Senate Government Affairs Committee, where he helped draft landmark legislation, including the Lobbying Disclosure Act of 1995. He also advised the committee members on campaign and election law, as well as constitutional and government ethics matters. Mr. Boggs began his legal career as a law clerk to Vice Chancellor Karen Berger of the Delaware Chancery Court. He worked for two U.S. Senators, William V. Roth Jr., as well as Joseph Biden. Uh, Mr. Boggs also previously served as the General Counsel to the D.C. Republican Party, providing legal advice on campaign finance and election matters on a pro bono basis, a role he no longer holds. Mr. Boggs is a seasoned attorney with experience in a variety of legal, regulatory, and public policy matters. He will bring his expertise in data privacy, national security, and technological innovation, issues that are critically relevant to keeping the district's elections safe and secure. His experience on the Senate Committee on Governmental Affairs, working on campaign finance and election law will also serve him well. 
He received a JD from Catholic University, an MBA from Georgetown University, and a BA from the University of Richmond. He's a native Washingtonian and a Ward 3 resident. Since I'm moving these in block, let me quickly uh, read and introduce uh, PR 24-1056, the DC Board of Elections Karen Greenfield Confirmation Resolution of 2022. That was introduced on November 14th, 2022 by you at the request of the mayor. That resolution would confirm the reappointment of Karen Greenfield as a member of the board for a term to end July 7th, 2025. Ms. Greenfield is an experienced professional in the field of federal, state, and local government, commercial, international contracts, and procurement. Since 2012, she has served as the director of contracts at Northrop Grumman, where she leads a team of more than 60 employees. She brings more than two decades of experience interpreting, implementing, and ensuring compliance with various government procurement and financial regulations and laws. Her experience has allowed her to hone her ability to collaborate effectively and quickly interpret and adapt to new regulations and laws. Throughout her career, she has developed a reputation for being ethical, hardworking, independent-minded, and dedicated to working with integrity. Ms. Greenfield served on the Board of Elections since the beginning of 2022, or sorry, 2020, and has been there for two primary, two general, and one special elections, all during the pandemic, which presented unprecedented challenges for the board. Over the last two and a half years, she has gained a strong understanding of the operations and responsibilities of the board, as well as the two agencies over which the board governs. She holds a BS in Management Sciences and Accounting and a JD from Duke University, and she is a Ward 4 resident. With that, Mr. Chairman, I, uh, I guess move and ask that both measures be placed on the consent agenda for the legislative meeting to follow. Thank you, Councilmember Allen. Are there questions from members? Councilmember McDuffie? I, I, I got a chance to see part of the, the chairman's press briefing yesterday, and there were a number of questions that you actually fielded about uh, these two nominees to the Board of Elections, primarily raised uh, by Dorothy Brazil and Janelle Rose Barrows about the fact that they were placed on the agenda for a vote without having had a hearing. Um, they raised some of the issues that had come up in the most recent election on November 8th uh, and uh, questioned, you know, why they wouldn't be a hearing for them to answer questions. One is a new nomination. The other is a renomination. And so I wanted to give you an opportunity just to respond to that uh, because I think the concerns about not having a hearing uh, on these two um, were uh, some valid concerns. Through the chair? Through the chairman, yes. Mr. Allen. Absolutely. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, as we just voted moments ago on a nominee to the WMATA board who did not have a hearing as well, um, I guess we'll ask a question about these, but not that one. Um, these, as, you, as I just said, were introduced on November 14th, 2022, uh, which was only a couple of weeks ago. We are at the end of the year in the council period, so there is just literally not the time to be able to hold that. Uh, Mr. Boggs is filling six months of a uh, unexpired term. So certainly next year, there would be the opportunity to be able to hold a hearing should he be renominated. Uh, Ms. Greenfield has had a hearing previously and has appeared before the committee numerous times uh, in terms of that. And this is a renomination of her appointment, but we certainly would be able to hold a uh, hearing next year should uh, Mr. Boggs be renominated since he only has six months on that term. Uh, each of the candidates, however, uh, did all the work that we do as the committee in advance of any hearing. Um, I've met with each one of those, and I wouldn't be putting them forward today if I wasn't comfortable and confident that they could do the job, and the Board of Elections needs their seats filled so that they can continue to do their job as they wind down the election we just went through and then prepare already for the next one to come. Councilman McDuffie? I'd ask that they be placed on non-consent. Both of them? Yes. All right. Are there further questions from members? Does that include the WMATA nominee, or is that just these? Just the two that I asked about. OK. Uh, I heard no other questions. Uh, Madam General Counsel, are these two measures legally and technically sufficient for our consideration? Yes, they are. Madam Secretary, is the record complete for each? Yes. Madam Budget Director, do the measures fiscal impact statements comply with council requirements? Yes, they do. Uh, these measures will be placed on the non-consent agenda, which means they'll be taken off of consent uh, for today's uh, legislative meeting. Uh, that's going to conclude the business for today's committee, the whole meeting. The agenda states that the next 
uh, says the next legislative meeting will be Tuesday, January 3rd. Of course, we have the additional legislative meeting today. Uh, we will probably take uh, five minutes, Madam Secretary, or Mr. Assistant Secretary, and then set up for the legislative meeting. Yes, please. Can we get five minutes to allow cable TV to swap out um, what they need for the broadcast, please? Uh, all right, we will try to reconvene at 1.45. It's 1.39 and this meeting's adjourned.